All right, let's check out section 3.3. So, so far we've measured the center of a graph. Now we want to see what's going on in the rest of the graph. And so that's going to be measuring variation. So let's look at two graphs, histograms below. We have the weights of 250 people from the Boston Marathon on the left. And then we have the weights of 250 people on an airline flight on the right. And then it turns out both of these have the same average of 155. So that's right around the middle of these, just to mark them. So they have the same average or the same center, but I think we can all agree that the distribution is very different, right? These two graphs do not look the same. And so let's see. Um, we're going to define this new, these new words called range and standard deviation so that we can talk about the differences of these graphs. And so those are going to measure how spread out the data is. So the airline, since it's more likely to have very small people, like babies and children, and probably some larger people than the marathon, the weights are more spread out, right? On the right graph, it's just more spread out, right? The data goes farther in both directions. And so that's going to create a larger range and standard deviation, which we will define very shortly. Standard deviation measures variation. So how much does the data vary versus, so the marathon runners only vary a little bit because it only goes over a little versus the air flight varies more. And so we can see that below. This is variation. As the graph gets wider, we have more variation. So let's figure out how to calculate this and then we'll have the calculator do it. So let's look at two data sets. Um, they're just numbers. I'm looking at small data sets just while we practice and then we'll look at real data. But in green, I have 70, 77, 80, 86, and 92. And then in pink, I have another data set, 59, 70, 80, 97, and 99. So you can think of these as maybe these are five test scores in a class or something, anything. It's just practicing. So let's find the mean, median mode, and then we'll talk about the new stuff. So mean, we just add them up. And then there's five numbers, so we divide by five. So I get 81 for my green set or my set one. And do the same thing for set two. Add up the five numbers. Make sure you hit enter because it's not going to divide all the numbers by five if you don't hit enter. Then divide by five and it looks like we get the exact same number. How about my median? Median is right in the middle. So it looks like that's 80 for both of them. And then mode is just what shows up the most. Nothing shows up more than once, so they would both be none. There is none. We don't have to have a mode. And then range is what's new. So range, R is for range. That's just the largest value minus the smallest value. So for set one, it would be 92 minus 70, which is 12. Sorry, 22. <laughs> and then for set two, it'd be 99 minus 59, which is 40. So finally, something's different. When we only look at mean and median, these data sets look the same, and they're clearly not the same. Um, there is some drawback about the range is it doesn't use all of the data, right? We only use the largest and the smallest and we kind of ignore everything in between. So if you look at these two dot plots below, they both have a range of six would be the largest and one would be the smallest. So they'd both be five, right? For both, but they're very different data sets, right? Sample one is really consistent. In sample two, really everything's on the left and only six is over there. So I want to find a different way of describing data sets other than just the range. Um, because again, the range is only using the largest and smallest and kind of ignoring what's going on in the middle. And so standard deviation is going to take care of that. That's going to tell me the difference between these two data sets. 
between these two data sets and these two data sets. So let's check out standard deviation. Um, it's a little weird. Um, we're going to do it by hand just to kind of understand what's going on and then the calculator can do it for us. So we'll start with the population. We'll assume these are population data sets. Uh, so what we're going to start with is we're going to find deviation from the mean. Um, deviation from the mean just means how far away from the mean. Which in a way tells us how spread out the data is, right? Is the data close to the mean or is the data far away from the mean? Right? If we go back to our first graph, right? This data would be close to the mean, so we'd get small differences. And this data is maybe farther from the mean. And so we would get larger numbers. So that's kind of the idea. It's measuring how far things are away. So let's do that with data set one. So this is data set one, same one from above. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each data value and I'm gonna take away the mean. So we're gonna take the X values and we're gonna take away 81, the mean that we calculated. So we're gonna do 70 minus 81. 77 minus 81, that's what this column is, just how far away. 80 minus 81, you may or may not need a calculator. I'm just showing the math. We get negative one, we do 86 minus 81, which is positive five. And then we get 92 minus 81 for 11. So this is telling us just how far things are from the mean, right? We get bigger numbers or more negative numbers as we get farther. So we want some sort of average so let's add them up and see what happens. And we get zero, so that's not really helpful for finding an average. And this will actually always be zero. So that's how you could also check your work. So I can't really average out zero, so what we're gonna do to take care of this positive negative thing is just square all the numbers. So 11, we're gonna take each number Negative 11 squared, I do have the negative in parentheses on purpose so that the negative gets squared also. This column should always be positive. If it's not positive, you're doing something wrong. And so I'm gonna square them to make them be positive. So if it's not positive, something's off. So we'll square them all. So negative four squared would be 16, right? Because four squared is 16. We get one. 5 squared is 25, and then 11 squared we already did is 121. So just make this table, and this is really doable. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find the sum. We're going to add them up because we kind of want to, again, average things out. I get 284, just adding them up. This is a sum. And so when we do averages, what do we usually do? We usually divide by the number of numbers. So I'm gonna divide by five because there's five numbers. I'll just say n equals five. And we get 56.8. And then there's one final step, and we'll summarize this, is we need to square root it to undo the squaring, right? We squared everything, so we wanna undo that. So we're gonna square root to undo the fact that we squared everything. So the square root button is above the x squared button, so you have to hit second square root. Anything in yellow or on my calculator, maybe a different color on yours, you have to hit second first, 56.8, enter, and you get standard deviation. I'm gonna use this new symbol. It looks like a O with a hat on it is 7.5366. And I will talk about rounding later, but I'm gonna do four decimal places for now, and I'll tell you why later. So because of the five seven, it goes up to six. And that is called standard deviation. Right now it's just a number, but we'll be able to compare data sets with this. And so here's our crazy formula. So what did we do? So we found the sum of the differences squared, so that's 
this column right here, I'll color code it. So if you, the formula itself looks really intimidating, but if you do it piece by piece using the table, it's not so bad. So the green part is the sum. And then we took that sum and we divided by the number of numbers. And that's where we got the 56.8. So 56.8 is the entire thing inside the square root. So basically the order is find the sum. So if the formula intimidates you, find the sum, divide by n, and then take the square root. This is just a summary of this intimidating formula. But we have to have formulas to have a nice short summary. And so then the square root was the last step. So I'll color code it. So it's an intimidating formula, but if you make a table, it's really doable. And it has this new symbol, it's called sigma. And that's standard deviation. Um, in parentheses, I have variance, because if you do continue statistics, you talk about variance, which is just the square version of deviation, but we're not going to talk about that. So it's in parentheses, so if you continue statistics, you'll be familiar with the term. Um, and then the only difference with the sample is you divide by n minus 1, which I'll talk about in a second. And n is just the size of the sample. So let's talk about why n minus 1, and then um, we'll save the rest for another video because this video is getting a little long. So why are we dividing by n minus 1 rather than n for the sample? Oh, and for sample, we're going to use s rather than sigma. So the purpose of finding the sampled standard deviation, right, because it's only a sample, is to estimate the population. Right, the whole reason for taking samples is to guess a population. Um, the problem is, is samples tend to have less variation. Um, if you think about surveying five people versus 50 people, right, there's just less variation between five people because things can only change so much, right? So that's what's happening in a sample. So they tend to underestimate. So by dividing by n minus 1, it decreases the denominator. So let me show you with a calculator. Right, if you think about, let's just pick a number, 10 divided by 9. No, let's do 100 divided by 9 versus 100 divided by 8. Right, it gets a little bit bigger. So by decreasing the denominator by going from 9 to 8, we actually increase the number to kind of make up for that sampling error. So decreasing the size of the denominator actually increases the size of the number. And so it's just, the main idea is it's making up for sampling error. But you don't have to memorize the reason. Just make sure you pay close attention to these. So this is where identifying a population and sample is going to be way more important because it slightly changes the math. So in this previous example, if it were a sample, I would have divided by 4 instead of 5. But we'll get into that in later videos. All right, I'll see you in the next one.